Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Zoo School Live. Um, we are actually going to be doing a little bit more of an informal program for you guys today. Uh, we have three of our education ambassador animals whose birthdays we are celebrating. So what you guys are gonna do, if you wouldn't mind, you guys can just immediately put questions, comments right into the feed so that we can answer all of the questions that you're interested about. Um, and we're gonna meet three different animals today. Um, so I actually am going to introduce you to our first animal who actually just absolutely loves her present currently. <laughs> This is Creamsicle. I'm gonna take her back out for just a second so that she can say hello. And then we'll let her go back inside her present. Hi, can you come here and say hi <laughs> to our special guests for your birthday? Awesome, thanks Creamsicle, that was very nice. So Creamsicle is a Nelson's milk snake. You might have seen her on Zoo School Life before. These guys are what we call a color morph, and they're more native to our Mexican region, where it's hotter and drier. You can actually see in between the white markings that she has are little stripes of yellow. So she's called a color morph because where that white is, is actually usually black. And you see those black, red, and yellow markings that both milk snakes and coral snakes have, right? So she is what we call a color morph. Not really albinism, but kind of sort of similar. So we're gonna put her back down because that's where she's most comfortable. I'm gonna see if she goes back into her present that we made for her birthday, which is actually on the 1st of May. So this upcoming Saturday. So snakes really, really love um, dark, warm, cozy, hidden places. And so um, we often give, or underneath, we often give our snakes certain types of enrichment like this <laughs> that they can hide under or inside of because that's where they're mostly going to feel safe. Now, Creamsicle here is going to be turning 18 years old. That is pretty darn old for a snake in general. These guys have a lifespan of about 15 years, 20 if they're lucky. Um, so she is definitely an older lady. Now, you might notice some crinkles. Um, we are aware of those crinkles. She is actually not overweight. We've had her looked at thoroughly. She's just got a little bit of water storage, um, but otherwise she is perfectly healthy, especially for how old she is. Oh, look at her peeking her head out. <laughs> and she was named Creamsicle um, because of the colors that she is. Actually, when she goes opaque, so what that means is snakes kind of look like their scales are cloudy and they turn this bluish whitish color um, they turn opaque right before they shed and shedding helps snakes to get their old dirty skin off and their nice new pretty skin underneath shows also helps them to grow so when she turns opaque she actually looks even more like a creamsicle because she's this pale pinky purpley color um, which is pretty cool. Now when the snakes turn opaque, it's their time that they um, are a little bit more vulnerable. Same thing when they are eating. So they can't really see very well. The reason being, snakes do not have eyelids. Their, skull, their eyes also turn opaque and they also shed off. So when that cloudy scale covering over their eyes is present and they can't see very well, they're a little bit more hesitant with their surroundings because they can't um, as easily identify with their sight if a predator is nearby. So we do not use our snakes when they are opaque because it's more of a stressful time for them and then they are off use. So if any of you guys watching have any questions or comments about Creamsicle, um, you're absolutely able to put those into the chat. Um, we can also answer all of our questions at the end, um, but 
Miss Marissa, who's filming me, if there's any questions that pop up, she can always just ask them along the way. All right. So we're actually going to go ahead and um, say happy birthday and goodbye to Creamsicle, our Nelson's Milk Snake, because we have another one of our friends whose birthday is today. So we'll go ahead and carefully pick Creamsicle up. Say happy birthday, happy 18th birthday, Creamsicle. We're going to put you back on home. And Miss Mercy is going to show you our setup for our second animal friend who is actually making noise off camera because she's just so excited. This is a really special birthday because he's turning one today. And I do have to say he's one of my favorites. I am a little bit partial to him being one of his trainers. And without further ado, we're going to introduce Pesto, the striped skunk, to his birthday celebration. Oh yeah, that number one Nebraska looks pretty nice. No, it's a little cold. <laughs> so we'll just wait until he feels comfortable to come out completely from his crate. Um, our cake melted a little bit, so he probably doesn't want to touch that with his, with his little paws. Um, because uh, as... <laughs> okay, bye! <laughs> Take your present inside. That's okay. Um, they're very, very dramatic of some of our ambassador animals. And therefore, um, they don't want to get their little paws all wet. So we'll wait until he comes on out. I'm sure that he will to explore some more of his tasty treats. We also have some enrichment item toys in here as well so that he can interact with those. So Pesto came to us from a, um, a wildlife organization. He was descented before he came to the zoo. Um, so that means that his scent glands were removed. It's a very easy procedure. Think of it as um, a similar case to maybe your tonsils being removed, you're good to go the next day. Um, so therefore, he cannot spray us or any of our guests because that wouldn't be very polite and probably wouldn't be much fun uh, to deal with, right? So um, he came to us at a very, very young age. And so we've been working with him from almost the very beginning. He was actually only this big, uh, very, very small, um, and we were considering the name Einstein uh, because he had Einstein hair all over the place and it was sticking straight up. Um, so we just put that as his middle name. Now, I uh, actually, we, we named him Pesto, um, not after the sauce, but actually after a word in Spanish that is um, similar to meaning stinky and it's often used in Puerto Rico. Uh, so that's what we named him after is being stinky. So pesto, or short for pestoso, uh, which is, we think is pretty cute. So uh, let's see if he's, oh, almost done chowing down. No, not really, that's okay. That number one is pretty exciting apparently and a little bit frozen for that Nebraska. Um, so striped skunks are a species that is found in our area. He is very well trained because our trainers, including myself, have been working very, very hard um, to positively reward certain behaviors that we would like to see. Uh, that doesn't mean that you should just go out and uh, interact with the skunk. Probably not the best idea. They can spray you, right? Which is um, uncomfortable and really stinky, but also pretty dangerous. That spray is very, very potent. It's very, very strong. So that means that um, if you actually get sprayed in the eyes, it can temporarily blind you for up to 30 minutes. Um, and it's uh, very, very, very long lasting. So uh, false fact that tomato juice helps to remove that odor. Um, if let's say, for example, your dog happens to get sprayed by a skunk, actually makes it worse. <laughs> 
So if you have a dog that gets sprayed by a skunk um, and you give them a tomato bath, you know, have a dog that smells like skunk and wet dog and tomatoes. Um, you actually want to use a um, mixture of hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, citrus, and dish detergent. And eventually that combination, if you uh, look online carefully with a parent or a guardian, um, you can figure out how much of each. And it kind of creates this <laughs> lather. Um, and you're able to kind of soak that into the fur of your dog. Um, and then the smell hopefully should come out in about two to three days, which I know some of you are about like, oh my God, that's not good enough. It is so much better than waiting three weeks for the smell to naturally come off of the fur of your dog. Or if you had the unfortunate circumstance of being sprayed yourself, uh, three weeks of you smelling like a skunk. So again, Pesto is enjoying his first birthday today for those of you popping in. Anyone who's interested, please feel free to uh, post any comments or questions that you might have about any of the animals that we're meeting today and birthdays with whom we're celebrating. You can see he's working really, really well with those strong, sturdy claws. These guys, striped skunks in particular, are diggers. His really, really long, strong claws are not sharp, but they're really, really durable and sturdy. And that's because these guys are what we call opportunistic omnivores. Good job demonstrating that scrub, that digging their pesto. <laughs> um, and they're going to be <laughs> using those strong claws, mostly to dig for bugs. These guys are going to be eating anything and everything that they can get their claws on. That's why they're called opportunistic omnivores. Anything that they can eat, they're gonna go ahead and try and eat. So yes, unfortunately, if you do not have secure garbage cans, um, skunks along with opossums and raccoons are ones that you'll find trying to maybe search through your garbage for any tasty treats that might still be lingering there. Uh, the cake that he is currently munching away at is ice and the colors came from food safe food coloring and some um, fruit and veggies were put into that cake. So everything is perfectly healthy and safe for him to consume and he looks like he's really going at it with those blackberries. He loves fruit but he also loves vegetables. Um, some of his favorite vegetables are yam, string beans, sugar snap peas, but these guys will pretty much eat everything that we have in our kitchen. Um, but fruits are nice and sweet, so he definitely really likes those fruits. So we're just going to sit here. Um, I'm going to stop blabbing away. You guys are more than welcome to just watch Pesto celebrate his first birthday. And if you guys have any questions that you would like to ask about him, please feel free to put them in the comments. don't have any questions or comments, but do we celebrate all the birthdays here at the zoo? It's a great question, Marissa. Um, we really try to do our best. Um, we have a lot of animals in our collection, um, in our ambassador collection, as well as our exhibit collection. So as a whole, I don't remember the specific number, but it's, I think, around 300. Um, so that's a lot of birthdays to celebrate, but we really do try our best um, to celebrate all birthdays. Um, if you guys have watched any Zoo School Live episodes, um, you will probably know that Sally is um, one of my favorite animals that I get to work with here. And we actually don't know her specific birthday, so you guys can all yell at me on this chat. Um, I'm a horrible bird educator mom because I've never actually celebrated Sally's birthday because we don't have a date, so I really should just pick a date um, and celebrate, but all the keepers and educators really try and do something a little bit extra special 
for the uh, animals whose birthdays we're celebrating. And it doesn't necessarily have to be food. It could be um, an extra pool uh, for the otters, for example, or it could be enrichment, like we've given creamsicle for uh, some animals to hide in, or it could be some enrichment for the animals to interact with. Um, so the bison, for example, they love, love, love leftover Christmas trees and um, they like to headbutt them and sc scratch their heads on them. So um, all different kinds of enrichment we try and spoil our animals for a little bit to help celebrate their birthdays for sure. All right, Pepto, would you like to go back in your crate? Because guess what? We have one more birthday to celebrate. Oh, I'm going to get some more things over there. That's fine. Can we show them how great we are at crating? What a good boy. Thanks, Pesto. One of the things that we train him to do is to crate. The crate is a safe place. He is also station trained, target trained, harness trained. Um, and then he's also injection trained, which is actually really, really important. Um, makes our lives, the lives of our veterinary staff and the animals' lives much less stressful and more safe um, when they voluntarily allow to be given injections. For example, um, some of his vaccines that he needs to have administered, he will just uh, very calmly sit while eating and our veterinary staff can give him his injections. All right, guys, so you can follow me. We have one more birthday that we're going to celebrate. If we happen to lose you from our Wi-Fi connection, stay tuned. You can just make sure to either log back in or just wait for us um, because we're actually going to go into her exhibit. Her cake. Now I definitely didn't want to give her her cake yet because um, well, it's a little muggy and humid outside. You guys have, uh, I would think, seen this one if you've seen, if you tuned in to our more um, spiky, prickly friends. Marissa, who's filming right now, this is actually one of her favorites that she gets to train and interact with. Um, and she was actually born here. So Khaleesi was born here at the zoo. So she has porcupine parents that were here. And if Holly, who's walking behind me, uh, can remind me of her specific uh, parents. Spork and Ivana. Spork and Ivana were or were are her parents. And we're going to head up on here and see if uh, she wants to interact with her cake. Now, um, if any of you have been to the zoo and you've walked past our education porcupine exhibit, you might have seen her on a day like today, exhausted, plopped over with her limbs all willy-nilly hanging out like she's never ever been in this temperature or climate where we don't find porcupines all that much They're a little bit farther north and west they are native to pennsylvania they are native here so we actually have things called misters to help keep our porcupines a little bit cooler you can kind of see she's being a little dramatic at the moment, hanging near her water. She is perfectly fine, I promise you. Actually, her cake today is going to be um, probably something that I think she'll really like because it is ice. And we will give our animals who sometimes want to be cooled off in the hot temperatures um, some granite slabs that we stick into the freezer so that they can stay nice and cool, um, or some ice, or just some frozen treats in general. You know, follow us. There's Pokey, acting a little bit dramatic, but not as dramatic as Felicity. Oh my gosh, he's coming up. Stay awake. Felicity's actually just celebrated her birthday yesterday. And she turned six. 
works. So we have Creamsicle, who turned 18. Pesto, who just turned one today. And Khaleesi, who turned six yesterday. And Holly actually made this absolutely beautiful, wonderful <laughs> <laughs> number six. <laughs> that is just a little bit different of a number six. It's just one little piece fell down. That's okay. Wow, Khaleesi says I want nothing to do with that. And this is actually what we expected from her. Because again, she is a little bit of a drama queen. What we just put on top of her ice cake is actually her favorite snack. I promise you, even though she's acting like she does not like it, that is called rodent block. And it is usually her absolute favorite thing to eat. Rodent block is a grain given to our rodent species. Wow, she has just proven me all sorts of wrong. Oh, nope, okay. Maybe I am. Sometimes the vegetables work, sometimes they don't. We also have fruit, like apple and cantaloupe that she's also saying, no thank you. This is the worst birthday ever. <laughs> but we really do try our best. <laughs> she might interact with it when uh, we leave, which is often the case as well. Animals sometimes will not participate on camera like you want them to, and no fault of their own, right? But again, that rodent block has all of the minerals and nutrients that she needs to stay nice and healthy. Porcupines in the wild are more often eating vegetation and foliage in trees. I don't have anything else for you. We're giving you all of the snacks, my friends. I promise you. Um, but these guys get what we call browse, form of foliage enrichment. Can actually see some you can actually see some honeysuckle in her exhibit right here that is approved for I think almost all of our animals if not all of our animals and they love to chew on that as well she's looking at Marissa for food we're gonna see maybe she just needs to choose it on her own oh maybe that is in a fact the case independent porcupine. she is a strong independent porcupine who doesn't need any educator to give her her snacks. Gonna and then drop. she's gonna go buy her water. <laughs> so again, we're just gonna let uh, Khaleesi go ahead and eat her snacks. If you guys have any questions about any of the animals that you guys have met today, Creamsicle, the Nelson's Milk Snake, Pesto, the Striped Skunk, or Khaleesi, the North American Porcupine, or any questions at all about birthdays or animals at Elmwood Park, please feel free 